Okay, folks, we're moving on to a more plausible V versus T graph. And what that means is that we're not going to have any of those instant instantaneous accelerations or anything ridiculous like that. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to focus on the V versus T first and then the D versus T. Now, what you're going to notice is on the D versus T, I've actually already um, pointed out um, and plotted, I should say, not pointed out, but plotted um, the various positions. We haven't talked about how these red dots were calculated yet, and we're going to do that later in this video. But first things first is we're going to analyze what we're seeing here in terms of the motion on this V versus T graph. For the sake of clarity, what we're going to do here is we're going to break up this graph into distinct sections. So the first section is between 0 and 20 seconds, then 20 to 25, then from 25 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60, and 60 to 90 sec seconds. Sorry, 60 to 90 seconds. Now I'm going to call or label, I should say, each of these sections so it's easier for us to communicate. So this first section I'm going to call A. The second one, C, B, sorry, followed by C, D, E, and F. Each of these sections represents a different type of motion. So let's focus on section A. Section A is experiencing positive acceleration. How do we know? Well, we're going from rest to positive one meter per second. So the velocity is increasing in section A. In section B, if you take a look, the velocity at the beginning of the section is the same as the velocity at the end of the section. What that means is that there is no acceleration in section B. This is constant motion. In section C, we start off with initial velocity of positive one and end up at rest. So section C is negative acceleration. Those are quotation marks. So negative acceleration. Section D is this right here. And it's just along the x-axis or the time axis, really. And if we look, that means at the beginning, at 40 seconds, we're um, at rest. And at 50 seconds, we're at rest. So that means this entire section, we are at rest. Next, let's focus on section E. In section E, we're starting off at rest, and at the end of it, we're moving at negative one meter per second squared. So here, we're experiencing negative acceleration. I suppose I could just write it as NEG for negative. But anyway, you get the idea. Negative acceleration. Also, here's another thing too. Not only are we experiencing negative acceleration, but we are now moving in the negative direction, which means we're moving backwards here, unlike what was happening in sections A, B, and C. Uh, let's talk about that. Let me, let me clean some things up here. So in sections A, B, and C, everything is above the x-axis, which means that the velocities are always positive. Now, here's the thing. The velocities are always positive, but sometimes we're experiencing positive acceleration and other times we're experiencing negative acceleration. So here's a point that I want to make. I, I avoid using the term deceleration. I don't like the term deceleration. There's technically nothing wrong with the term. But what I don't like about deceleration is that that always implies slowing down. But that doesn't necessarily always mean negative acceleration. You can have a negative acceleration that is speeding you up or slowing you down. And we actually have evidence of this in this question here. Let's focus. In section A, we have positive acceleration. And we're going from zero to positive one. So we're moving forward. So positive acceleration. In section C, we have negative acceleration because we're going from a positive to zero. So we are slowing down or what people often refer to as deceleration. This is why I don't like it. Let's take a look at section E. Section E is also negative acceleration because we're going from zero to negative one. But in this case, we're not slowing down. We're actually speeding up, but in the negative direction. So that's the deal. In both cases, in section C and E, we have both negative acceleration in both cases. But in one case, our speed is decreasing, and in the other case, our speed is increasing. So I use positive and negative acceleration only. And really, that actually helps us to, to determine the direction of something called the net force, which is what we're going to be talking about in the next unit. What causes objects to move are things called forces, and the net force is just the balance of all the forces acting on it. So for an object to accelerate positively, that means there has to be something pushing it in the forward or positive direction. For someone to experience negative acceleration, that must mean that there's a force being applied 
in the negative direction. So let's talk about driving your car and you put on your brakes. When, you, when you're driving your car and you're moving forward and you put on your brakes, your brakes are actually working against your forward motion. It's actually the ground that's actually pulling you back. So when you slow down, the force being applied to you is backwards from the brakes. But when you put the car in reverse, you're actually speeding up, but in the reverse direction. But the push is in the same way. It's backwards. So when you put on your brakes in the forward direction, it's pushing you backwards to slow you down. But when you put the car in reverse and start speeding up backwards, the acceleration is also negative because the push is in the same direction. Now, here's what's really going to mess you up. You've got the car in reverse, but then you put on the brakes. Oh dear, what happens there? Well, in that case, here's what you got going on. You're going from a negative velocity because you're moving backwards and you're coming to rest. And in order for that to happen, for something to stop you moving backwards, something has to be pushing you forward. So in that case, the brakes are actually accelerating in the positive direction. It's kind of crazy, but we'll really get into the heavy detail of this when we get into the um, dynamics unit. All right, and finally, let's take a look at section F. So in section F, at the beginning of F, we're moving at negative one, and at the end of uh, F, we're still at negative one, which means that we're moving at a constant negative velocity. No acceleration, it's constant motion in section F. All right, so there we go. So we now know what type of motion we got going on in each section. So again, in section A, positive acceleration. Section B, constant motion. In section C, negative acceleration. Section D, we're at rest, which is not constant motion. Hear me out. For it to be constant motion, you have to have motion. You have to be moving. So rest is not a form of constant motion. Some people argue it is, but I disagree. Rest is rest. Constant motion means that you're either moving at a constant speed in the forward direction or a constant speed in the negative direction. And by speed, I meant velocity. Section E is negative acceleration. And section F is constant negative motion. What we have to do next is we need to figure out what this graph below, the D versus T graph, is going to look like based on the behavior of the V versus T. Well, here's the problem. We don't know what the accelerated motion sections are going to look like on a D versus T. On a D versus T, we've only talked about constant motion and what rest looks like. So let's recap that. So on a D versus T, if you have a flat line like this, that means the object is at rest. If you have a positive slope like that, there we go, a positive slope like that, well, that's considered constant positive velocity. This is just more positive, so going faster, faster still. We're at rest again. Then if we go down like this, now we have a negative slope. That means we have a negative constant velocity, even more negative, so on and so forth. But none of these straight lines help us when it comes to acceleration. So we're going to ignore acceleration for a moment. We're going to get to that. What we're going to do is we're going to do the constant motion sections first. So let's take a look at section B. So in section B, we know that it's constant motion and we actually have been given the points. That's the beginning and that's the end of section B. So since it's constant motion, we'll just steal this line over here. We know that it's just going to be a straight line like that. Now for, con for, for section D, we know that it is at rest which means that the line needs to be perfectly horizontal. And that is what our velocity looks like, our D versus T graph looks like, I should say, for section D. The slope of this line here is zero, whereas over on this one here, this slope was positive. This slope is zero. Positive slope equals positive velocity. No slope equals rest. And then the last section that we know how to draw is section F. And that is a negative velocity, constant negative velocity, which looks like on a D versus T, a negative slope like this. Okay, good stuff. Now the tricky bit is what do we do with sections A, C, and E? Well, in order to deal with these sections where we know that there's acceleration, we have to relate what acceleration means to slope on the D versus T graph. So again, the slope on a D versus T graph gives us the velocity. So that means at the beginning, the velocity is zero, which means we have a slope of zero at the beginning. Then the velocity 
goes to a slope of positive one, which means at the end of this, this first segment, the slope has to be positive like this. And in between, the speed was increasing gradually, which means that the slope is increasing gradually, which means that it's got a slope up like this gradually. And we end up getting a portion of a curve that you should recognize that you did in grade 10. And that is a portion of a parabola. So acceleration on a D versus T graph makes the shape of a parabola. So what we're going to do is I want to talk about what that looks like and what those mean. So on a D versus T, positive acceleration is represented by a portion of a positive or upward facing parabola. So this is considered, let's just move this down here. And this is again on a D versus T, not a V versus T, not a velocity time graph, but a position time graph. So if we have positive acceleration, it is going to be part of a upward facing parabola. Guess what negative acceleration looks like? A downward facing parabola or any segment. So if we have positive acceleration, we get what I like to call a smiley bit. There we go. Positive. See? Smiley face. Happy. Whereas if we have negative acceleration, sad face, we have portion of a negative parabola or a frowny bit. So positive happy parabolas, sad emo parabolas. Yeah? You like that? Smiley bits, frowny bits, emo parabola. It's all, all good stuff. Now, that being said, I, I suppose we don't need the smiley face bits. Fine, I'll get rid of the eyes too. All right, so now here's the point that I'm making. So any section of this parabola here is considered positive acceleration. So even just this little section there, that's really hard to see. There you go. Even this little section here, which looks negative, but it's not in terms of acceleration, that is. That's all considered, every segment here is considered positive acceleration. And the reason why is because of the way the slope is changing. It's going from a negative slope to less negative, to zero, to positive, to more positive. So in that entire case, we are trending towards the positive. Let me give you an analogy. It's minus 20 outside. Then it goes to zero. Then it goes to plus 20. The entire time it got warmer. I'm going to argue that if it goes from minus 20 to minus 10 outside, that's still getting warmer or a positive trend. And on this section, this would be going from like a positive to a more positive. So like going from like five degrees to 30 degrees. And on the negative side, any portion of this is negative because we are going from a positive slope, which is a positive velocity, to less positive, to zero, to negative, to more negative, to even more negative. So that entire trend, we're going from positive toward the negative. So again, this would be like if it was, you know, 30 degrees outside, then down to 10, then zero, then minus five, minus 10, minus 30. I don't know where you're living where that happens in one day, but sounds terrible to me. But in any case, you get, you get the idea. Okay, so now let's get back at it. So now to complete our sketch. So in section C, when we look at section C over here, we can see that the acceleration, the acceleration in section C is all negative. So that means this section here from 25 to 40 is part of a downward facing parabola. So a frowny bit. So it's going to look something like that. And section E is also negative acceleration. So it's also going to be a frowny bit on this graph. So it's going to look something like this. So it isn't a perfect little curve. It's kind of hard to draw by hand, but you get that idea. There, that's a little bit better. Okay, so now let's talk about parts B through D inclusively. So in parts B, you're asked to find the, the, the area beneath the curve on the V versus T graph for the following time section. So 0 to 20, 20 to 25. Okay, so these all here which we have a little spot here for you to do that. So what you're asked to do is to find the area in each of these sections, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And in part D, you're actually asked to find the slope. So we're looking for the slope of section A, B, C, D, E, F, that sort of thing. So I have a very specific way that I want these written up. So I'm going to show you for section A, which is the 0 to 20 second section. So let's zoom up here again, and I'm going to highlight section A. So we need to find the area of section A. Well, that means it's a triangle. So what we know is that the formula for a triangle is one half base times height or base times height divided by two. So this is how I want you to write it up. I want you to write it up like this. 
the area of section A, and I absolutely want to have the subscript, is equal to one half the base of section A times the height of section A. Do not forget your subscripts. Otherwise, bad things academically will happen to you. So in this case, what we're going to do, I don't normally make you substitute the, um, the values in, but we're going to do that in this case. And th there, there's a reason for it. So let's take a look at our base. And our base for section A is going to be 20 seconds. 20 seconds. All right, now let's take a look at the height. So the height is going to be this right here. So the height is equal to one meter per second, specifically positive. So substituting in here, that's going to be positive 1.0 meters per second. Now let's give myself a little bit more real estate. There we go. Now, there's an advantage to doing this because we have seconds here, which is technically in the denominator, and the numerator, I should say, and we have seconds over here, which is in the denominator. So this and this, they cancel out. So we end up getting one half, 20 times 1.0, positive 1.0 meters, or positive 10 meters. And that positive means our displacement. We have a displacement of positive 10 meters because that's what the area gives us. So the displacement in section A, harpoon, don't forget that, is equal to 10 meters in the forward direction. Now let's focus on this right here because if we look on our D versus T graph, our first red dot was right there. So after 20 seconds, our displacement was positive 10. And that's how I got these red dots underneath our curve is I did that by calculating these areas. Now, the next thing we are asked to do is to calculate the slope. Now, the slope of a V versus T graph, let's go back up there and uh, let's clean things up. So the slope is the slope of this section right there. And that, the slope on a V versus T, if you recall, gives us acceleration because slope is equal to delta Y over delta X. But in our case, it's not delta Y, but delta V. And it's not delta X, but delta T. And that is by definition, our acceleration. So in our case, our delta V is going to be our V2 minus our V1. And our, our delta T is going to be our T2 minus our T1. So the acceleration in section A, don't forget the subscript, is equal to delta Y of section A, nope, delta V of section A divided by delta T of section A which is equal to positive 1.0 minus zero divided by 20 minus zero, which gives us positive 0 0.05 meters per second squared, or as a vector, the acceleration in section A is equal to 0 0.05 meters per second squared forward. Awesome. Okay, so now I've shown you how to do um, the area and slope for section A. Your job is to complete it for the remaining sections, B through F inclusive. And the solutions to this can be found on the last page of the 